ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you recording from today, Catherine? I am in a hotel room in Anaheim, California. Hmm. So we have two correspondents in California today and one still hanging out in rainy New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. And b- back home in Wisconsin, they got snow. They got <gasps> Oh my like gosh, a I saw inches. somebody post that today. <laughs> like not just Wisconsin, a, a bunch of places. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, missed that. So are you in your shorts today then? It's quite <laughs> warm today. It's warm, but it's funny because you still see people with like sweatshirts and oh yeah long oh, yeah. pants and socks and people don't dress for the weather here they dress for the season <laughs> i wore wool sweaters when i was growing up in southern california yeah just like everybody else yeah i mean it did we went to disneyland yesterday so we we flew here you know before the sun was up we were flying out of milwaukee and then we got to la and um took a bus out to our hotel and then we just went to Disneyland right away because that was the only opportunity we had to take the kids to Disneyland. But by, you know, five o'clock when it was getting dark, it was kind of cooling (laughs) cooling down (laughs) and people were like regretting that they didn't have sweat sweaters and sweatshirts and things. You're from Wisconsin. You can handle it. I know you would (laughs) think. But yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be able to take, you know, two whole teams of kids to Disney and they, you know, got a big, huge group picture of them in front of the Mickey flowers and the the garden kind of thing. And then, um, you know, they got to run around together Mm -hmm. all day. So that was fun, even though, you know, most of them had woken up at three o'clock in the morning. They were... (laughs) They held it together pretty well because they were at Disneyland. Aww. Yeah, use up all their adrenaline now, and then, then when they have <laughs> yeah. to skate, they'll be... <laughs> I know, they did so much walking yesterday, and now today they have to skate for four hours, so we'll see how that <laughs> goes. <laughs> well, and I get to see you in a couple of days, so that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Twice you guys have done that without me. I'm quite jealous. I know. In real life, I'm going to go and see Catherine and watch her daughter skate. Watch so. the competition. Yeah. Wow. So that is so cool. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm jealous. I haven't been in an ice rink in years. <laughs> what am I going to wear? I don't know. I, know. I don't know what to wear either because it. I'm assuming it's more like a big arena where you're far enough away from the ice that it's not actually cold. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You'll have to let me know I'll when you get there. I'll find out because I'm going to go there before you come. So okay. You'll have, have, have to let me know. have to get my winter woolies out. have insight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll advise. How nice for you guys to be getting together. Well, I will be here working as I always do. <laughs> Terry, we'll leave room else? for you to, to cut and paste your picture into our photo. Yes, please do. Please, you know, uh, we we'll get some random person to sit in the middle, and then I will Photoshop my okay. face onto <laughs> theirs. Somebody short. <laughs> we'll just get Josie. She can stand in between. <laughs> yes, yes gra- grab a passing child. How, how tall is Josie? She's tiny. She's, she's taller than you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not saying much, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. If you're, if you're past 4'10", you're, you're looking down on me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, tell her to like, like stoop down, scrunch a little bit. down a little. Yeah, <laughs> you know about where I come on you, Catherine. Mm-hmm. Look at some of our old about pictures. Yes. Tell her to put her head about in the right place. That's so funny. <laughs> Grab some passing ten-year-old and tell them. <laughs> yes, we have a couple Stand of those with us. Well, exciting weekend ahead. That's for sure. Yes, yes, and I expect to hear all about it after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's do what we're here for then. Yes. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now. I'm Nicole Erdix, and with me today are Catherine Haleko. Hello. And Terry Morrow. Hello. And today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about helping friends on our speed round, 
shout out some stuff we like on the Roundabout Roundup, and do some shameless self-promotion. But first, it has truly been a rough couple days in Terry's hometown of Thousand Oaks, California, and uh, surrounding yes. area. So, yeah. So tell us. Well, what's... we're recording this uh, on Friday, the, the Friday before you're listening to this on Monday. So yesterday, Thursday, was the day that the news reports came in about a shooting uh, in a uh, country bar in Thousand Oaks, California, which is a spot on the map to most people, but is the place that I grew up and lived on and off until 1988. And uh, that was horrific enough, reading the reports coming in on that. And then uh, somewhere in the late afternoon to evening, I started reading about brush fires. And as we're talking right now, there are brush fires closing in on poor little Thousand Oaks from like two directions. And I belong to a I Grew Up in Thousand Oaks Facebook page. And there's just so many reports of neighborhoods going up in flames. Is it at this street yet? Yes, it is. This hill went up. And while it is not yet in the part of town where my childhood home was, I recognize a lot of the streets. I recognize a lot of the neighborhoods. And it's just apocalyptic, you know? Yeah. Like, come on. Already, already it was the worst day imaginable for Thousand Oaks. And now people are losing their homes right and left. The whole large amounts of the town are evacuated. Uh, you know, I'm seeing like my high school on the list of places that people can evacuate to. It's just surreal. So it got me thinking about, you know, our roots. We've talked before about uh, where we grew up as kids versus where our kids grew up. And we think it's a better experience or a worst. But there's also something about, you know, where do you feel that your roots are? Do you still feel connected to the place you grew up? Would you say now you're more connected to the place you're living now? Do you think your kids are going to feel a connection to where they grew up? Or do you think they're just going to go off and do their thing and, and never look back? I'm at a point in my life now where I've lived more of my life where I am now than I did where I grew up. And so I don't really think of my old hometown all that much. I haven't been back since my mom passed away. So I really have nobody, I have no family there or any reason to go back. I think of it fondly, but uh, I don't think of it much unless something like this comes up. And then, um, and, and you know, the Facebook group also, I don't know if you guys belong to these for your old, old neighborhoods, but I go on there and, you know, most of the time they're old pictures. Hey, do you remember this parade? Does anybody, you know, in this class picture, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of fun, but I don't, most of the time don't even see people I know, rec names I recognize occasionally. Uh, so it's a very loose connection. And when something terrible like this happens, it's, it's, you know, brings back that there's still a part of me for whom that is a meaningful place. And I hate to see terrible things happen to it. But I don't feel like it's, you know, other than that, I don't feel a connection to it. Um, and yet the place where I'm living now, where I've lived more than half my life, I guess now, um, it's a place I moved to. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm, not, yeah. it's not a place I feel really connected to. I lived in a whole bunch of different places in my 20s. And so, I don't know, I, I'm kind of trying to come to terms with where I feel is my home. Um, I, you know, I think I've always felt that like people are more your home than places. Yeah. But uh, do you guys still have any connection to you, the place you grew up? Do you still think of it as a place? Was there one place? I think, Catherine, you may have moved around a lot when you were a kid, right? No, no, I didn't really. Um, yeah, okay. I lived in the same small college town for mm -hmm. for my whole life um okay what i yeah, did do was, was as well. leave um for college which not a lot of people did um yeah a, a lot of people stayed and then they left but you know a lot of people <laughs> stayed for college um and i really didn't want to because i just didn't want yeah. to do four more years of high school <laughs> in college <laughs> so yes. so i left um but, you know, given that it it was a college town, it was where Penn State is, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have I still have that connection to it, um, you know, sports and whatever. And um, several years ago when there was such a terrible scandal coming out of the Penn State football mm -hmm. um, yeah. department or whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah. you know, that was – that – 
was sort of like where you are, Terry, right now, which, you know, you couldn't really think about anything else, you know, it was yeah. just, yeah. and that was obviously national news. And, and so is, so is this incident. Um, right. And, it, you know, but it was so personal to so many yeah. people that I knew. Um, and one of the sort of key figures in that, in that scandal, somebody who, mm -hmm. who finally reported something, um, had actually gone to my high school. Oh, wow. So it was, it was a big deal and it was yeah. difficult. Um, yeah, it's weird seeing your, like this, this place that you remember warmly in memory, just be, be pulled out into like black and white and harsh mm -hmm. light of yes. news. And it's like, no, this is, this is this a snow globe over here. Right. See, this is mm -hmm. where I grew up. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's put it back. Right. <laughs> it's exactly. Not, it's not supposed to be that way. Yeah. Every now and then I see a movie star who grew up in Thousand Oaks. That's where I see my town's name in the headlines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not in, this way. In my case, oh, and maybe this is what you were thinking of before, Terry, my parents moved um, right when I graduated from high school. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I do still have family there, but mm -hmm. it, but not my parents. So um, I never have – I didn't go back nearly as much as I would yeah. have um, if my parents were living there. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, my kids, I think – I think they feel pretty connected to where they live, to where we live now, because um, mm -hmm. they've been there their whole lives. My daughter was two when we got there, so obviously yeah. she doesn't really remember life before that, but she is very proud that she was born in New York City, and that is what it says on her birth certificate. <laughs> she thinks that is very cool, so. That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nicole, cool. you've you've made probably the the biggest change from where you grew up to where you are now of any of us. Oh my god. I mean I'm on an opposite coast but I'm still in the same country. It's a 180. <laughs> yeah. Not, I mean I grew up in this tiny I think maybe yeah 3000 people I want to say. Mm -hmm. Um tiny community it was isolated it was the nearest city, so the nearest McDonald's was <laughs> five hours away. Wow. Still oh is. It's five hours away. So it was, um, yes, and that was the, where the nearest airport was. So it was very isolated and it was, and it, sorry, I keep saying was past tense. It is up. So if you know where Lake Superior is, it, mm -hmm. it is, um, about 40 minutes north of Lake Superior. So it's north <laughs> and, yeah. and cold, like winter yeah. was 10, 10 months of the year. It was cold up there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like I'm in a totally different, you know, now I'm living in a suburb of LA basically and it's <laughs> hot all the time. And it just couldn't be any, um, any different. Like it's just really, bizarre but I do I'm like Terry I'm on a Facebook page for my hometown and and it, it, it's actually it's kind of sad like I, I feel a connection to it in the sense that that's where I spent most of my like my formative years growing up like that mm -hmm. was I think we moved mm -hmm. there when I was four and then I left when I was 17 and um so I did all my you know my elementary and then most of my high school years there and so I have like a connection to it in that sense that it, like I feel like I remember every turn and every trail and every you know, nook and yeah. cranny in yeah. the community and, <laughs> and because it uh -huh. was small and we had free reign of that community as long as we were in the door yeah. by the nine o'clock siren we <laughs> had free reign and um and I we'd be all over town on any given day and from one end to the other and back again you know it was just one of those communities that you we're all over the place with no yeah. cell phones. And so my kids do not relate at all. Like they hear me talk about it and they see pictures and, but they just cannot relate what it would be like to live in that community. Oh, yeah. and so, um, they're, yeah, they, they just have no idea what that's about. And I left when I was, when I was six, 17, I left when I just turned 17, mm -hmm. I left and, um, and while I was away, because I went and did a year abroad for school, and while I was away, my parents moved 
to the other side of the country. <laughs> so uh-huh. <laughs> I've never been back. So it's kind of like this, you know, part of my life that's yeah. never had any closure. Because I always thought when I was away for that year, I was going to be coming back home and picking up where I left off, but I didn't. Um, yeah. When I came back, yeah. my parents were in a whole other community and um, <sighs> on the other side of the country. So that was kind of bizarre. But And then my kids, I don't know, I think they probably feel like, you know, where we are now is their hometown. Definitely my daughter, because right. she's been here since she was in grade one. But my son, he's a little torn. But do they have a little, like, sort of pride or, you know, this is something special about me. I'm from Canada. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're still tied to, in many ways, to the community that we moved from when we, right. the last community that we were in. Because that's where my son spent his younger years. My daughter was born there. And we still have friends and family there. We go back there all the time and visit. And yeah. So they do have that connection to that uh-huh. yeah. hometown. So, yeah, it's the nature of moving around. You have all these different places that right. you know, That's true. have different meanings. Yeah, unlike you guys, my parents stayed in the same town after. I mean, I went away to college, and then I came back and... Uh, then I went in, in to work in Kansas City, and then I came back, and I lived at home for a while, and then I lived in the same town. I went out, but, you know, and then even after I moved to New Jersey, my parents were still in Thousand Oaks. You know, I would come and visit uh, every year or every other year. I was constantly coming back, so it was like home base, even after I had long ceased to live there. Uh-huh. It was still, you know, a place, uh, and then, you know, once, once... I no longer had anybody living there. It's really fallen away, but I still had a connection to that place well after I stopped living there, which is, I think, you know, maybe makes the roots a little deeper, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, and my kids, I mean, I, they're in their twenties now and still living at home. So this has been where they've always lived the same town in New Jersey. Yeah. We've, you know, we, we've moved house once, but we, stayed in the same town and their grandparents lived in this town. And for a long time, their aunt and uncle lived in this town. So it's like every now and then we look at our property tax bill and we think we should really move to someplace else. <laughs> and it's like, there's a wave of panic that goes over the, you know, the kids that what we're going to do what and so, well, we're going to take you with us. But I think it's still, you know, this is where they know everything. Yeah. You know, this is where they went all through school. This is where they've they've always the only place really. I mean, they don't remember being in Russia and being in the orphanage. This is the only town they've ever known. Um, so it will be hard. It will be weird. Huh. Even though I can see from my point of view that there are things more and more things about the town I don't like. And even though I've lived half my life here, I have no particular attachment to it. But I'm sure they do. And it would be very weird for them yeah. to just up and up and be from someplace else. And the one, the one thing that stops my husband and I, every time we think about moving is that they do have a lot of connections here. Yeah. And especially for them, you know, disabilities, that's, you need those connections. Yeah. You want there always to be a big, heavy safety net of people who know them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, I, that was never a concern for me as a kid. It's like, get this net off of me. <laughs> I'm going to go else. <laughs> yeah. I'm swimming over there in the deep end. Yeah. I, I mean, this is, the, this is the longest that, like the house that we're in now, we've been in for 10 years, and it's the longest that mm-hmm. I've ever lived in any one house. Oh, wow. So even because even in my hometown, we had moved around a couple times. Yeah. So this is really like, this is setting down roots for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a whole new experience. <laughs> And it's so, so culturally different. Oh, my God. (laughs) Once again, another 180 from where I grew up. It's a very, very different, yeah, culturally a very different world, too. So, A lot of people, you know, when we we moved to Wisconsin from New York City, basically, and a lot of people were like, oh, my gosh, you know, how can you do that? Like, yeah. you know, culture shock, it's yeah. going to be huge. And and we both said, you know, this we're moving to the same kind of place where we grew up. Right. Um, uh-huh. You know, it was it was the city time that was an aberration. It's not <laughs> it's not this place. You know, it's it's a yeah. lot like the places where we grew up. I mean, right. It's it's like a smallish town. It's 
it's very suburban, even though it's not a suburb of anything. Um, Mm -hmm. But it has that kind of feeling to it. And, you know, where I grew up, it was a college town, which is another whole different animal. But um, right. Yeah. (laughs) And then my husband grew up in a small town, but that was, you know, packed in with a whole bunch of other small towns and a little more urban, um, but still very tiny in terms of like (laughs) parochialism. I don't know. So, but yeah, but where we are is definitely, it feels a lot like where we grew up. So we didn't have a crazy culture shock when we got there. (laughs) Those people were afraid we would. Yeah. Yeah. That does seem different. Especially after being in New York. Yeah. But, you know, we we had a two-year-old. It wasn't like we were going out to dinner and shows and bars and, you know, we weren't <laughs> doing anything like that when at the time that we left. And, and our friends were kind of scattered all over, too, because that's that's what happens. You know, your, your sure. friends are in a hundred-mile radius of suburbs. And <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. But I think I think my kids definitely identify with being from where we are. So, yeah, from where they they've yeah. grown. So I tell them in thirty years they have to come back and do a podcast and see if we were right that they feel a connection. <laughs> exactly. What What was that place I used to live? Oh yeah, I kind of remember. That. Yeah. What What form of like nostalgic Facebook group will they have? Like, because it That's definitely right. won't be Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of a cool thing to be able to connect with with places on Facebook, yeah, on social media. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I should see if there is one for my town. I'm in the one for my high school class. Um, oh, which mine was wasn't a big enough <laughs> a big class. Mine was big, so there's plenty of people. Yeah, it, occasionally I see somebody on there that I I recognize their name or they recognize me and they friend me on Facebook, but it's like. We haven't seen each other in like, well, she's, you know, 50 years or 40 years. Right. Yeah. We really, what are we going to talk about? But well, I guess it's sort of nice to connect anyway. My Facebook group is, it's actually kind of sad because uh, the town that, that I grew up in, it was a mining town. So the economy mm-hmm. relied on the um, operation of the local mine. And once the mine shut down, three quarters of the town shut down so oh, people wow. moved like there was a mass exodus people moved and left and that's why my parents left and um they a lot of businesses closed schools closed like just it just uh, the whole town shut down basically so it's a little bit of a i don't know it's a little bare bones these days so we see these pictures pop up on facebook it's kind of sad it's like oh my gosh <laughs> i can't believe it wow. that's what it is now and you know it hasn't it hasn't gone in the opposite direction like most communities do where they grow over time and evolve. Yeah. And actually regressing a lot. So it's quite yeah. sad to see. But lots of familiar faces and names, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. From what I can tell from reading on the group, Thousand Oaks is still a very similar sort of suburban outpost to what it was when I grew up. I'm sure there are, there are big changes, but it still seems to be not terribly much different i'm sure it's expanded a little bit and uh i can't remember the last time i was there it was a couple of months after my mom passed away and my we were helping my stepfather pack up the house and i remember one of my mom's friends said to me i'm probably never going to see you again am i and i said yeah probably not (laughs) i haven't been back so i was sad but at the same time there's no reason you know, it's like it's a long flight from New Jersey. Yeah. And, you know, if family is there, it's one thing. And you didn't but have just any to go friends visit a place. N- uh, no, not really. Um, I have, still have some friends in Southern California, but I, one friend I went to high school with is out here in New York. Another friend I went to high school with is in Florida. Uh, I have a couple of friends. One of one is a little further north in in California, and another one, a couple other ones. I'm not quite sure where they are now. Oh wow! But uh, nobody's still in. I don't think there's anybody still in Thousand Oaks. Um, huh. And in, and nobody that I'm close enough friends to, to make that to kind of trip. take that flight. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, that's it's expensive and it's it's long and I just don't see a need for it anymore. But uh I'm very sad to see pictures and hear accounts of things going up in flames. Oh, it's devastating. And it's you know, it all comes back. I remember you know, you think you've forgotten stuff and mm-hmm. you know, you remember enough when you see the news reports. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. It's not looking like a good day today for them. By Monday, I guess it'll be all over by the time you folks are listening to this. Maybe you will have seen some stuff on the um and the the shooting was just horrible too. I mean, the I remember the college there that uh, in town where I, at least one of the victims was from. I had friends who uh, went to college there, and I'm sure their parents thought, you know, well, they're they're in town, they're close by, uh-huh. it's safe. Um, you know, it's those kids who are going up the highway to Santa Barbara that are going to be trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it can come anywhere. I guess these days. Right. Well, and it's just, it's scary for me to think about putting Kristen out into that world again, you know, yeah. out into that world mm-hmm. in another year. Right. So, <sighs> yeah. Well, do we have something less depressing for our uh, speed round? Well, Let's hope so. A little no, bit. No, we really don't, do we? <laughs> well, we're, we... Welcome to Parenting Roundabout, <laughs> your feel-bad yeah, podcast. Feel bad. Yes. Well, day. we did want to talk for our speed round today about things that we might do in in these kind of situations where people are um, affected by tragedy, whether it's a, you know, a, an entire community like this is, or just a family or a, an a individual friend. We had just this past week at my daughter's high school, um, a student passed away and we don't really mm. know any you know, it was sudden, but we don't know any other, other details. Um, but a mother that I, I know, you know, not well, but I, that I know put together a huge, um, sign up genius, you know, a, a online sign up to bring, um, like soup and bread and, Mm-hmm. you know, comforting foods to the teachers and like a hot chocolate bar for the kids, um, and tissues and just like things to, Oh wow! isn't that sweet? And she, it, you know, that is so she, nice. it must've taken just to make, just to create this sign up. She, I mean, it had a hundred items on it or something, you know, oh my gosh. it was so, it was so long. Um, because she wants to do this for a couple of days. Um, and I just, I just thought it was very touching that she, she thought of this and organized it and, you know, just to like, she called it like love and care for the high school students and staff or something like Uh, that. Um, cause you know, my, my daughter was quite upset when she came home from school that day. Um, she did not know the boy, really at all. I mean, she said she had spoken to him a few times, but he was, you know, it's, it's still a small enough world that she knows plenty of people who did know him and and knew him well. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was, she was very sad. So, yeah. Um, so for our speed round, we thought we'd talk a little bit about things we like to do or try to do, um, when we're faced with these situations, you know, this, I wish I could contribute to this, effort at the high school, but I'm not going to be, be there oh, on the yeah. days that, that they need it. So, um, but Nicole, what do you, what do you do? And it, it depends a lot on whether it's something local or not, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and what the need is, I mean, I've, unfortunately there's the last couple of years I've had, uh, several of friends that have, been seriously ill and Mm -hmm. have had to have treatment of one kind or another and so uh, I mean for one friend I would drive her to her weekly appointment Mm -hmm. Um, another one we did meals another one uh, we did um, (laughs) we we used to pick up our girls um, in the same area at the elementary school Mm -hmm. And there was about five of us moms and was there? No, maybe four. And every Friday. And so once my friend started her treatment and 
was going through it. And then afterwards we created this little uh, thing that we would do. We'd call it pie Fridays. And on Fridays after school, one of us would bring literally a chocolate pie. (laughs) We would, the moms would sit there and eat it and the kids would have some and then the kids would go off and play after school and we'd just sit there and chat. And yeah, so we had our, our pie Fridays. So um, yeah, you know, we've done, walks to raise money um yeah pretty much I'm I'm pretty much yeah I've seen a variety of things and done a variety of things lately I it just sort of nothing really had been in my life like that before and then we moved here and all of a sudden it was like (laughs) okay (laughs) so I feel like I'm kind of a you know okay what do we do now (laughs) what do you want me to do yeah I wonder if it's just a time of your life, you know, I mean, it's just I you, so. you're older now than you were when you were back there. I don't know. I hope so. Cause the, I don't know for me, I mean, yeah. And the people that were affected were all different ages, which was kind of weird too. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. So we, I kind of just have this mentality now, like I'm not, and I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm, I know what I'm not good at. So I am not going to be the one to make you a casserole. That's not me. <laughs> you will order so the I've casserole. Learned to, <laughs> I've learned to accept my strengths and my weaknesses. And so, you know, now I know that I can just get them a gift card at Panera or, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, drop off, I don't know, you know, a veggie platter or something. Right. <laughs> So I've also learned to to go with what my strengths are too. So yeah, that's kind of what we do or I do here. Um, yeah. How about Those you, are good things. Those are good things to do. I'm a bad, bad person. <laughs> I am terrible at this. I wish I was one of those people who get everybody organized like that. I admire the heck out of those people. I wish I had that. I I think I tend to overthink things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember one time somebody set up one of those things uh, for somebody that we knew who was ill. And I asked for the information to go onto the list. I went on there and then it was like, well, okay, what kind of casserole could I make? What would I make? Would this be good? Would that be good? Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And then I just never signed up. for it. (laughs) It's like I waited too long and all the slots filled up. And then I felt really bad because I had said, you know, I'll do something. Let me go on there. And uh, other situations I can think of where I needed to have done something. I should have done something. People I was, you know, fairly close to could have used my help and I just, I couldn't figure out how to do it. And it's ridiculous. I know it's ridiculous. You just offer, you just, just stop and do. Uh Uh, And yet I don't. So it is a, a failing and embarrassment of mine that I have no good answer for this (laughs) question. (laughs) I haven't had a ton of opportunities. I I will say, thankfully people around me have not left needed a whole Uh lot, but there are situations even right now that I should be doing something. I should be asking if somebody needs something or how they are or whatever. And it's just, I use excuses of work and stress and other things going on in my life, but it's really just that I don't seem to know how to do that. And it's stupid. It's hard. It's It's very hard to know. It's well, but Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard in one way, but on the other way, it's not. Uh, you know, the hardness is an excuse. You just do it. You just ask. And if you embarrass yourself, who cares? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you do the wrong thing, who cares? Right. It's the, the important thing is the person who is is suffering a crisis. You are not the imperson- important thing in the equation. Um, and yet, I have no good excuse. It's just awful. Let's get off this <laughs> I'm just going to go in the other room and, you know, whip myself a little bit more. <laughs> Hit my head against a wall, perhaps. You have done punishment. other things. A little self-flagellation, yeah. and then I'll be back. You've done things like <sighs> setting up that summer camp that you did for your kids. Well, I did, but then one of the ladies from that had a health crisis, and I just did absolutely nothing for her, and I just, I feel terrible. What's the wrong with me? What's, what's, I'm like cheaty. I get to yeah, be like, like cheaty on like the good place. Thing. When it comes to come, when it comes to do something, you know you have to do something, it's and yet paralyzing. you're like, yeah, yes, yes, it's terrible. Shame on me. I I well. found that 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 having missed some funerals in my life, 
that I still feel bad about makes me work yeah. harder to get to the ones that I can I, I yeah. that have come since then. You know what I mean? Um, but I also think that you know going to the funeral is is great and it does mean a lot to people, but they also need help. You know us. That's times. true. I have gone to funerals. Oh, so. see, there you go. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's it's mostly for people in my husband's family, and they, you know, that's where you see the family. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's another funeral. We get to see that end of that that part of the family. Funerals and yeah. weddings is pretty much when we get together with family. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. sometimes you just do what you're capable of doing at the time, and yeah, but I don't do anything. <laughs> but I'm capable of doing something. Well, let this be an inspiration to you the next time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. The next time, come on. If somebody needs to get sick oh, around me, come on. No, come on. That's what are you doing? What are you doing? Mean. <laughs> you eat a casserole. The next time, some something happens, you get on our our Facebook chat and you say, "Okay, somebody needs help. What should I do?" And we'll we'll yeah. we shall got throw you. out ideas for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Even if it's just. Sending a message sometimes. That's all people need. I guess. I guess. To say, I'm thinking about you. And But even that. Well, you know, do you do it on social media? Do you send a card? Do you call on the phone? If you call on the phone, you might just, um, <laughs> anyway. Stupid. Text message or Facebook messenger? Take your pick. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but if it's somebody who doesn't have those things. I have friends who don't have those things. I have friends who are completely yeah. offline. Okay, we'll help you figure it out when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get off this subject so that you don't have to think about it Thank for the you. moment. Uh, oh boy, I thought no, this was I deserve be to suffer. <laughs> I deserve to feel bad. Going down it's down. shameful. No. Well, remember, you can hear a new spout and blah, a new speed round normally every Wednesday through Friday. This coming week, it's going to be Tuesday, Thursday, and yes. Friday. Hi, we hope you're enjoying this episode of Parenting Roundabout. We're not one of those podcasts that's trying to sell you websites or mattresses or meal kits. I mean, we totally would, but no one's asked us yet. There is, however, something you can do that costs you nothing, but will put a little change in our pockets. Listen to our podcast on the Radio Public app. Download the app to your iPhone or Android device and listen to Parenting Roundabout there, and we'll get paid for each listen. Plus a little more if you listen a lot. We think you'll enjoy listening to all your podcasts on this app, but if you could at least listen to Parenting Roundabout there, we'd be very grateful. Now, back to the episode. And now we bring you some of the things that we've read or seen or used recently that we want to shout out and share with you. I will ask Catherine, you're on the spot. All right. Well, I just thought I would mention my, a couple it's been a couple weeks now. My son and I saw the Broadway show Something Rotten, and it was a lot of fun. This was the you know the touring production, and um, it's a very funny musical that is kind of a takeoff on musicals in general and also Shakespeare. <laughs> so it's set in the time of Shakespeare, and it's sort of a, a rival writer to Shakespeare trying to come up with, you know, the next big, great idea. And, uh, and so mm -hmm. he, through slightly nefarious means, comes up with the idea for musicals. <laughs> and it's just extremely silly and funny. And, it, you know, it was just sort of naughty enough that my 13 year old son felt like he was getting <laughs> away with something by watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was super funny. And, you know, plus he gets a little Broadway and Shakespeare education at the same time. So we enjoy that quite a bit. It's called Something Rotten and it is yeah. on tour. Sounds fun. Terry, have you got anything? Uh, well, I'll call out an app that I had neglected for quite some time. And I am now on it again after I, I think I talked a couple of weeks ago about uh, this time management book was saying to, to, like group all the things on your phone and then shove them two or three screens in so you don't see them every time you turn your phone on. And uh, in doing that, I remembered that I had this Solitaire app. It's called Solobon Sol Solitaire, S-O-L-E-B-O-N. I have the free version. And I have now been playing that a lot. I've even been neglecting my sandbox coloring for wow. it. 
Uh, really? It has a number of different uh, solitaire games to play, including one that I think they made up that is called Askew, which I have been playing quite yeah. a lot of. So if you are looking for yet another thing to waste time on, uh, not that you should. You should not be playing with games on your phone. You should be productive and doing things and sending people casseroles and <laughs> uh, checking up on your old hometown and all these other things. But if every now and then you just find yourself with a free 45 minutes and want to play solitaire on your phone, that would be a good one to do. Yeah, I recommend it. Interesting. And Askew. Play uh, Askew with me. It's fun. Okay. How do you spell that again? A, uh, the, the, the app? Yeah. It's yeah. S-O-L-E-B-O-N. I just checked the App Store because I got it ages and ages and ages ago, but it is still available on the App Store. And um, there's a pay version and a free version. I use the free version. And it is just fine. But they have all huh. the – all any solitaire game you've ever heard of is on there someplace. Plus, they made up some new ones. So this one has – the skew has eight – Eight cards across. The the four on the left you can do down in uh, opposite colors. And the ones on the right you have to do down in the same suit. The ones that are in opposite colors you can move around. And the mo ones on the right you can't. And then you have to get them all up onto the aces. It's kind of fun. Uh -huh. I haven't played it in okay. years, probably. It was just languishing there somewhere on the back of my phone. And I rediscovered it. Huh. Hmm. My grandmother fun. taught me many kinds of solitaire. So. I... I grew up, uh, my parents had lots of friends and they all had children who were adults at that point because I was like, uh, you know, 18 years younger than my father's first child. Mm -hmm. So I would always be like the one child in a room full of adults drinking and playing bridge and doing adult stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would be <laughs> off in a corner of the room with a deck of cards playing solitaire. Mm -hmm. I a lot of solitaire in my day. Really? S sat at a lot of like, you know, the, the sit, sit by a fireplace where there's like a little brick thing and I'd be playing solitaire on it or on a floor anywhere yeah they would park me that huh. that before children before there were cell phones <laughs> that's right young people occupied themselves with cards <laughs> in the and dark books. dark days we would play solitaire with actual little with pieces actual of paper. playing cards <laughs> <laughs> How did we survive? <sighs> well, I know. And how do we survive without these apps in our life? I don't know, I mean, boy. I could have used I, all these things, audiobooks, right? podcasts, My games. life would have been so different. Yeah, it would have been. I would have um, been so much less bored when my parents had their second cocktail at dinner if I had had an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when you would go out with your parents and they would have like a couple of cocktails and then before you could finally eat, I would eat the butter pats while I was waiting for them to finally yeah, get and to the food get, part of the meal. You'd get one glass of soda and if it was done before your food came, well, too bad, you're not getting any more. <laughs> I would usually get a, a Shirley Temple while they had their Manhattans. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. See, I grew up in a town where there were no restaurants. <laughs> oh. So we didn't go eat out. <laughs> I should say no restaurants. There was like a cafe. <laughs> but, but it was probably like only another topic from like, like 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. or something. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, yeah, it was a tiny little thing. Um, but speaking of food and apps, my two favorite things, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going, going to shout out my Panera app that Ooh. I use a little too frequently, I think. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you've used it or not, Catherine or Terry, but um, Panera has an app. Yeah, I know of it. I don't know that I've used it, but I've seen that it is there and that it can do those things. And right yeah. now I'm in the midst of like a ridiculous trying to order Panera for an entire skating team. And I <laughs> oh have my gosh. several. I have more than one child who will not eat Panera. And I'm like, oh my. there are 700 that things on the menu. <laughs> like, why won't they pick Panera? Pick one. I don't. I can't. Don't even get me started. It's driving me insane <laughs> okay. right now. I bet. Is she vegan? No. No, you can still get vegan no. stuff. But there's okay, yeah, there's like ask. five thousand things on their menu. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just. Well, I love my Panera app, and it's easy to use. They keep they keep improving it. It's a lot better than what it used to be, and um, 
Yeah, and I like to do my online order, and then I pick it up in eight minutes. Ooh. So I love it. That's my fun. My big shout out. Yeah. Today. So I think you I, may have shouted you know. that out before, but it bears repeating. Did I? See, that's yeah. how much I love it. <laughs> She just can't stop talking about that app. No, because it's like, you know, front and center on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I see it all the time and I use it all the time. So Yum. And I will have to say that I have an actual Panera rep that I'm working with now on these orders because (laughs) we've done it a lot. Of course you do. um, She has been awesome. She's like helped me so much with all kinds of that is so shooting. Yeah, because wow. like <laughs> see you like Panera Nickel, but Catherine has a Panera yes. rep of her very own. Maybe Dang. I'll give you her number. <laughs> <laughs> She's great. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. Holy cow. Well and now we'll move on to our final segment today, when we're going to do a little shameless self-promotion and direct you to some things on our sites that we think you should take a look at. Last week, I proclaimed that because I was stating it on the podcast, I would have something new on my blog, and that did not happen. So let's try that again. I'm going to double down. <laughs> this time. Does that mean you're going to do two posts? It does not mean that, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought when you said double down. <laughs> no, I'm just going to like put my reputation on the line twice no i yes okay. I, I hope to have something up there uh and okay. if not well you probably spend too much time reading stuff online anyway so i'm just doing you a favor <laughs> uh, nicole what do you have this week well i put a new post on my blog last week good for you did i i haven't talked about this right because clearly i have a oh, habit thanks. of repeating myself <laughs> <laughs> you just know what you like there's nothing wrong with that yeah, it's a very, very, it's you know, completely finite amount of things that I like. <laughs> um, so this one I I wrote is called Four Things That Every School Needs to Make Inclusion Work. So mm. um, many occasions I've had people come up to me, not mentioning any names, inclusion doesn't work. Yeah. And inclusion can possibly work. And what do you mean that it actually happens? And yes. I'm... You know, my response now is, yeah, you're right. It doesn't work unless you have these four things. Mm, so good to know. Find out what they are on the inclusiveclass.com. Excellent. <laughs> mm-hmm. that sounds like a good resource. And uh, Catherine, what do you have? Um, I just thought I would mention my, I mean, it's called a business page on Facebook. Um, Mm -hmm. It's left over from my family (laughs) fitness days. Yes, Um, I have one of those too. But, you know, as soon as I sell one of my children's books, it will Mm -hmm. become my author page. There you go. Um, And so you should follow it just in case I have some news to post (laughs) there. Um, And in the meantime, it's... It's, you know, very low commitment to you to, to follow that page because <laughs> I'm going it, there right now and I'm going to follow it. It does not um, overwhelm your feed, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> you see, our, our lack of updating of things is is a service we provide you. You That's can right. follow us and not be taxed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only podcasts and and pull quotes are the only things we bombard you with. Oh, there you are. Oh, I'm following you already, Catherine. Oh, see? See, it's that. so it's so low key that you didn't even Okay, when remember. was the last time you updated? That's how low key it is. I know. Oh well. No. <laughs> oh no, you do. Yeah, I do. From time to time. Okay. Just put something up there that says, In lieu of reading something on this page, go spend time with your children. Yeah. <laughs> That'll make people feel good about themselves. <laughs> Go play solitaire on your phone. You got better things to do than this. Yes. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on Radio Public or download them from Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe so that you get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter where I am at Nicole Erdix, Catherine is at C. Haleco, and Terry is at Mamatude. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram too.
Best of all, stop by our podcast page at parentingroundabout.com and read recaps, find links on everything we've mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks to John Morin at johnjmorin.com for providing our in and out music, and I wish everyone a great week. <laughs>